The movie begins with a family of four entering their bathroom. A sudden alert about an upcoming thunderstorm has propelled the family into finding shelter there as the storm rages outside. As they settle down inside, we see Diane, the mother, who looks very concerned. She angrily asks her daughter Melissa where she was as she has returned home later than expected. Melissa herself looks a little stressed and zoned out. Upon hearing her mother, she answers that she was just with her girlfriend Amy. Diane sees her stressed daughter and this only multiplies her own anxiety. While Diane juggles her concern for Melissa's safety, she's also got her hands full with Bobby, her little son. Bobby's imagination is running wild, as he envisions the storm growing into a powerful EF5 tornado. As the boy keeps raging on about how when two tornadoes join, they make up an EF5, we see Melissa gloomily looking at her phone on the side. She's fretting not only about the storm but also about Amy's well-being. She texts her girlfriend again and again, but she does not receive a reply which stresses her even more. Turning to her mother, Melissa expresses her unease, sensing that something might indeed be amiss with the storm. Diane consoles her worried daughter trying to soothe her nerves. She tells her that the storm will soon pass and there's nothing to worry about. She says that soon everything will be alright. Bobby then tries to lighten up the tense, but somewhat boring, situation for him. He suggests playing a card game called The Great Hotel Escape. The stressed Melissa gets a little annoyed at her little brother and pokes fun at his reading skills, igniting a sibling squabble that fills the room with their voices. Amidst their escalating argument, their father Robert intervenes with a booming voice, urging them to halt the disturbance. Meanwhile, Melissa clings to her phone, incessantly texting Amy in hopes of a response. But the screen remains stubbornly blank, no messages coming through. Meanwhile, as the family grapples with their anxieties of the incoming storm, Diane's phone suddenly rings. She picks it up, looks at the screen and then lays it down without answering. Robert looks at his wife from the corner and then suspiciously inquires about the caller, but he has only met with Diane's vague dismissal, claiming it's no one of importance. The woman then asks if they want to play a game and tries to ease their anxiety by saying that the storm would be over before they are even started with the game. Bobby, on the other hand, asks what if their home gets carried away by the tornado. His mother laughs and says that won't happen. Melissa again makes fun of her brother, calling him dumb. This remark gets her a scolding from her dad and she swiftly apologizes. Just as the family is wrestling with these unanswered questions, an amber alert sounds again, this time warning of a tornado. Meanwhile, the persistent caller doesn't give up, reaching out to Diane once more. Questions arise. Yet Diane evades them once again, choosing not to reveal the identity of the caller. Robert gets pissed and starts making fun of Diane for thinking that their bathroom can shield them from the fury of a tornado that could tear their home apart. Diane's retort gives rise to another round of arguments between the parents, their disagreements echoing through the charged atmosphere. There seems to be some unresolved tension among the two adults. Amidst this tension, Melissa gets a little scared and asks if there is anything going on with her parents. But before she can get an answer, a sudden burst of thunder startles them, plunging them into darkness as the power goes out. Panic spreads like wildfire, and they start to shout, though Robert is quick to dismiss their concerns. He tells them to not panic as it is normal during storms for power to go out. He says that the lightning must have hit some transformer. However, a more powerful thunderclap shatters their fragile calm, accompanied by a disconcerting noise outside the bathroom door which didn't sound like lightning at all. This time the entire family gets scared. Instinctively, they gather closer, realizing that something has struck their house. Robert, being the man in the family, moves towards the door to go and see what happened outside but his attempts to open the door are met with failure. The door won't budge except for a small gap. Fueled by necessity, he asks for Melissa's phone and uses its flashlight to see the barrier that is holding the door closed. There, he sees that a tree has fallen, blocking their escape and imprisoning them within the bathroom. Melissa cuts in, saying that it must be the tree from their backyard where they buried their cherished pet dog named Spot. Bobby, unaware of the dog's passing, is overwhelmed by a mix of emotions. He keeps shouting that Spot ran away, not wanting to accept his demise, leading to a heartfelt outpouring of tears. Diane attempts to console him and hurriedly says that they would talk about it later since this isn't the right time for such discussion. With a heavy heart, Robert closes the door and comes back to sit in a corner. But Melissa notices that he came back empty-handed. Her phone is no longer in Robert's possession. When she anxiously asks, he says that he accidentally dropped it. The girl runs towards the door that separates her from her phone, her only source to get through to Amy. Taking matters into her own hands, she pushes against the door, grabbing around to get a hold of her possession. Frustrated, he reprimands her, reminding her that Amy will be safe and that she shouldn't let herself become overwhelmed, as it is just a storm that will pass. As they finally somewhat settle down, Robert reveals that the roof of their home has been ripped away by the tempest, thus the tree has fallen in, blocking the door. In the silence that follows Melissa's distress is palpable. She seeks guidance, her voice tremulous like asking her parents what to do. Yet, silence hangs heavy until Robert finally breaks it, offering that the only feasible plan for them is to wait. The scene changes and there is a flashback from the past. Melissa's mind takes a journey back, unraveling a vivid memory of her first encounter with Amy. She is seated on the bleachers just a little distance away from Amy, where fleeting glances are exchanged between them, creating an unspoken connection. Yet, it was when Melissa attempted to leave that Amy pursued her, 
leading to a confrontation tinged with vulnerability. Amy addresses Melissa's curious gazes towards the marks on her skin. Embarrassed, Melissa attempts to apologize but Amy stops her with a suggestive tone, saying that maybe she wanted her to look. She then reveals that she used to be a cutter, using the way to cope with the overwhelming weight of life. What Melissa hadn't intended to communicate through her glances, Amy desired to share. Amy confesses to Melissa that her struggles had been so intense that they had led her to a place where she felt emotionally drained. Morning arrives, and with it, a calmer external scene as the storm recedes. Nevertheless, their isolation persists due to the imposing fallen tree, which won't let the door open all the way. Diane wonders aloud if they could attempt to call for assistance once more. The idea ignites a spark of hope. Robert goes to try his phone but quickly gets frustrated with the object since it won't function properly, while Diane's phone has died due to low battery. The frustrations that had simmered below the surface erupt anew. With the couple engaging in yet another heated exchange, this time due to their phones. Amidst their argument, Melissa keeps asking her dad to use his phone for a phone call, but the man does not pay her any heed. In the midst of this all, Bobby's curiosity draws him to the partially open door. He looks at the mess outside and suddenly, his gaze lands on something he perceives as a snake. He looks closely and then announces that there is a rattlesnake outside, just near the dresser. Upon hearing this, Robert quickly arrives and inspects the scene but he does not seem to see any rattlesnake that Bobby had claimed to see. Diane quickly asks her son to get inside and close the door. The little boy follows suit, shutting out both the snake and the fear it inside it. In the bathtub, Melissa's impatience is evident as she absentmindedly picks at the Later, a surge of determination compels her to attempt opening the door, but her efforts yield little progress. Seeking solutions, she proposes the idea of breaking through the walls to Robert. An undercurrent of frustration tinges his voice as he aggressively tells her that the door is made of solid oak. The windows, composed of tempered glass blocks, and the walls themselves, a formidable six feet thick and constructed from sturdy rock. This makes it impossible for him to punch through. While Diane valiantly clings to optimism, the weight of pessimism hangs heavily in the air for most of the family members. Soon, a series of attempts to open the door follow, each family member taking their turn to wrestle with the unyielding door. Despite their collective frustration, the door stubbornly resists, an immovable barrier that refuses to grant freedom to the poor frustrated family. Diane's motherhood kicks in as she thinks of their well-being and the importance of staying hydrated in their confined space. She asks Robert to quickly empty his bottle since they need it to stay hydrated. However, tension takes a sharper edge when this annoying man slowly sips from the container and takes his time, emptying it, before handing it over. This gesture carries an air of spite, casting a shadow over their already tense situation. Diane takes the container, refills it with tap water and passes it to Bobby. The little boy hesitates to drink it, which prompts an outburst from Robert. He shouts in a harsh tone making the little boy jump in fright and quickly gulp down the water. Diane gets angry at Robert who soon tries to downplay his earlier anger dismissing his outburst as a jest. However, Diane's response is curt, a reflection of her frustration at his aggressive behavior. Meanwhile, suddenly, the electricity returns and the bathroom is bathed in light once again. They start hoping that since the light has come, maybe someone will soon come to their rescue too. As night blankets their confined space, apart from Robert, everybody else seems to calm down. Although they are growing hungry, a lighter atmosphere prevails as Bobby, Melissa, and Diane exchange jests their laughter momentarily easing the tension that has gripped them. On the other hand, Robert stands apart from the happy trio, his frustration manifesting in restless pacing. His anger shortly reaches a peak when his phone dies due to low battery and he shouts, falling down to the floor. The man seems to turn into a bloody maniac as he throws his phone, probably breaking it. The rage within him finds another outlet as he directs his fury towards the door, his fist making contact with it as he curses non-stop. His sudden outburst makes the trio suddenly quiet. Melissa holds her ears in the bathtub, cowering in the face of his anger. Another night comes and goes but nobody comes to the family's rescue. The weight of uncertainty presses on Melissa's mind, her worries growing with each passing moment. She helplessly asks why anyone has not come to their rescue yet. Robert, his mind racing to make sense of their situation, murmurs his thoughts aloud that the situation doesn't fit together logically. He seems to have lost his energy after the violent outburst and his voice carries the frustration of a puzzle with missing pieces. He wonders aloud that either all the people around them have passed away or have already been evacuated. This realization makes him understand that neither of the scenarios bode well for them. Melissa sighs in resignation and lies down in the bathtub when another poignant flashback hits her. She reminisces about a moment shared with Amy where the latter confesses about her struggle. Amy's confession revolves around a deeply personal struggle, a rare mental illness known as Cotard delusion, where she believed herself to be a walking corpse. The acts of self-harm she performed were a desperate bid to feel alive. Back to the present, we see the family resume their cycle of daily tasks. All of a sudden, an intrusion disrupts their routine. They see a rattlesnake which slithers into the bathroom. 
panic ensues, with Robert finding himself in the snake's path, prompting an instinctive leap onto the sink as the snake lunges. Everyone shrieks and tries to move out of its way. Robert asks Melissa to quickly pass on the plunger to him, which he uses as a makeshift tool, allowing him to steer the snake out the door. The encounter leaves them rattled. As the stress tightens its grip, Robert downs almost half a bottle of mouthwash. Then, a realization dawns upon him. The snake might have been a source of sustenance they overlooked in their desperation. In the face of their dire circumstances, even the unthinkable becomes a consideration. Moments later, a sudden shift in the atmosphere makes the family's ears pick up. They hear a strange, dull sound of footsteps outside the bathroom. All of them become hopeful and terrified all of a sudden. Bobby runs to see the intruder only to find out that it is a dog. His enthusiasm takes the lead, as he eagerly cracks open the door to make contact with the unseen canine. He happily declares that it is Spot who ran away and now has come back, still unwilling to accept his prior pet's demise. Melissa also comes and continues the interaction, offering soothing strokes and words of comfort. As they are engrossed in their sudden moment of happiness, the impossible happens. All of a sudden, the dog speaks in a deep beastly voice, asserting that it is indeed a good boy, before abruptly seizing Melissa. Panic and disbelief intermingle as she fights to reclaim her arm. Robert rushes to her side and together they fight off the beast. A desperate struggle ensues, culminating in Melissa wrenching her arm, along with the dog's tongue from its grasp. As desperation and hunger take their toll, a grim reality settles over the family. They are left with the necessity of consuming the dog's tongue to stave off starvation. As they stand around, looking at the convulsing meat, Robert voices his disgust at Melissa like he wasn't the one who suggested eating the snake earlier. Diane assumes the task of tearing the tongue into manageable portions to dispel the risk of choking. Melissa's resolve prevails as she takes the first bite, choking back her reflexes to vomit. Despite the ordeal, they press on, driven by the urge to survive. Yet, Robert's body rejects the bizarre food as he succumbs to nausea and vomits in response to the meal. Melissa, however, persists despite the challenges. Soon another flashback transports Melissa to a time shared with Amy. They sit in a secluded place and are making out, when a boy named Joseph invades their privacy and records their moment. The boy keeps following Amy around and spreading strange rumors. The relentless torment leads them to devise their own form of justice. They cast the bully's own words back upon him through a spell involving the tongue of Melissa's deceased family dog. Back in the present, an idea takes root within Robert's mind. Motivated by the prospect of escape, he wakes Bobby and draws him to the door, urging Bobby to squeeze through the small opening. When he is unable to do so, the man becomes full and tries to push the poor boy through. Terrified for her son's safety, Diane intervenes, pulling Robert away and unleashing a torrent of anger at him. In the midst of their heated exchange, the family remains oblivious as the rattlesnake slithers back into their midst, sinking its venomous fangs into Bobby's arm. In a frenzy, Melissa swiftly moves him to the tub, while Diane captures the snake within a trash bin. Panic envelops them as they assess Bobby's condition. His groans of pain make their anxiety worsen. Diane battles to secure a tourniquet, hoping to stall the venom's path to his heart, but Bobby's squirming makes the task challenging. Robert holds him and they bind his arm, then, the scared father attempts to draw out the venom. Amidst the turmoil, Melissa's tears flow freely, and she apologizes saying that it is her fault. Diane's heart constricts as she reassures that everything will be alright. Amidst the chaos, Robert once again gets crazy enraged as he screams and hits the door. Suddenly, a voice from beyond reaches their ears, offering a glimmer of hope. A distant sound, asking if they require aid, fills the air. Robert responds, directing the voice to their location, and the man attempts to follow Robert's guidance. But their relief takes a dark turn. The sound of heavy footsteps and gunfire shatters the fragile moment, drowning out the voice and leaving them in a cloud of uncertainty. Robert tries to peer through the door's crack, straining to make sense of the chaos outside but his efforts remain fruitless. Scared, he says that they better keep the door closed for a while. Hours pass as poor Bobby's situation gets worse while Robert, on the other hand, grappling with the magnitude of their helplessness, begins to crumble, the weight of uncertainty breaking down his resolve. Frustration takes hold as he lashes out at Melissa, who asks what they should do in their deteriorating situation. In the midst of their dire circumstances, Melissa's mind returns once more to a memory of her time with Amy. The weight of their actions with the strange spell come crashing down as they discover that the bully they sought to hex had met his demise. The realization hits Melissa hard, burdening her with a heavy sense of responsibility. Amy's revelation follows, as she confesses another creepy truth. She had also cast another spell previously. It was aimed at Amy. A desperate attempt to resurrect herself from the grip of her own mental illness. Amy's theory revolves around an unsettling belief that something malevolent resides within her, a force awakened by her spell, causing harm to others, something diabolical. Back in the present, in another corner of their confined space, Robert confronts Diane about the mysterious caller from before. Suspicion and desperation fuel his questions, leading to an accusation that Diane might be involved with someone else. Diane's initial perception is one of mockery. But as the gravity of Robert's desperation sinks in, she realizes he is genuinely asking for answers. The possibility that Diane's secret lover might provide help hangs in the air. 
However, Diane reveals that she had already forewarned the man that if she didn't call back, dire circumstances would have taken her. The exchange erupts into a heated argument, reflecting the strains within their relationship. The discord sends tremors through the room, striking fear into Melissa's heart. Amidst the tumult, a small voice emerges from Bobby who pitifully says that he is in pain. The family's attention shifts. Diane pleads for Bobby to hold on just a bit longer, a desperate hope still clinging to the belief that rescue might be imminent. Robert succumbs into another fit of rage, trying his best to tear down the door while Diane recites a story that Bobby demands amidst his slowing heartbeat. But the inevitable happens. Bobby finally slips away, his heartbeat fading into silence. Amidst the heartbreaking situation, Melissa's mind retreats into another haunting flashback. The memory unfolds, recounting the night of the storm when she and Amy performed a final ritual in an attempt to thwart the malevolent spirit that seemed to inhabit Amy's body. The stakes were high but their objective was clear. They wanted to prevent the awakening of the sinister force that lurked within. After performing the spell, she comes running back home in the storm and they enter the bathroom. Yet, a jarring realization interrupts her memory's flow. Bobby is absent from this recollection. In her dreamscape, Bobby's lifeless and rotten form rests in the bathtub. Suddenly everything morphs into crimson hues as she retches blood. Within the nightmare, Robert's voice casts blame upon Melissa, branding her a witch and holding her accountable for the unfolding disaster. She begs for help but both her parents remain unfazed, crying in pain. She feels something inside her stomach as she tears open her and retrieves the dog's tongue. Her stomach spurts out blood and both her parents kneel before her, attempting to As she snaps back to reality, she finds herself vomiting and panting heavily over the toilet. For a fleeting moment, she forgets the truth, Bobby's lifeless form lying in the bathtub. On the other side, the crushing weight of stress compels Robert to seek solace in an unusual manner, consuming wet wipes as a means to battle his alcoholism. The burden of guilt becomes unbearable, pushing Melissa to confess everything that she did with Amy. She recounts the spell she and Amy cast, the rituals meant to counteract the awakening of a malevolent entity. The chilling details include the bully's demise, choking on Her story initially sounds funny to Robert, who pokes fun at it. But then after hearing about the bully's demise, he gets worked up. He confronts Melissa, placing blame at her feet and pointing to Bobby's lifeless body as evidence of her supposed voodoo shit. The next day dawns, and with it, further deterioration. Robert's condition worsens, blood seeping from his eyes, leaving his vision compromised. Desperation takes hold as he proposes a grisly solution of consuming for sustenance. Diane vehemently opposes the suggestion, unwilling to entertain such a horrifying notion. Robert, driven by his blurred perception and an overwhelming need to survive, navigates the bathroom, hampered by his impaired senses. Diane tells him that his condition is due to his consumption of mouthwash and wet wipes. Driven to madness, Robert shatters the bathroom mirror, wielding a shard of glass as a means to All of a sudden, Melissa's phone starts to ring out from just outside the door. Robert quickly manages to grab the phone and answers the call, exchanging words with the unknown caller before hurling the device away and shutting the door. The mother and daughter duo are shocked at his actions as they could have called for help with the phone. Before they can speak up, Robert's actions escalate, choking Melissa in a delirious attempt saying that since she brought them to this point, he must end her to end all this. Diane intervenes, desperately pushing him off of her daughter and landing a few punches that inadvertently release the snake concealed within the trash bin. Chaos erupts anew as the snake strikes, biting Robert's face, only to meet its gruesome end as he grabs it and bites its head off. The room becomes a chaotic hell of violence, as Robert employs the snake's remains as a weapon against Diane, lashing her back again and again before Melissa comes up behind him with the glass shard. Her sanity is shattered as she attacks her father with a frenzied assault. Her blows are relentless even after his life has faded away. Left alone in the aftermath, Melissa and Diane huddle together. Diane's relentless determination persists as she chips away at the walls, prying away cement blocks with singular focus. Eventually, an opening to the outside world emerges. She leaves a slumbering Melissa behind, promising to return. The next day, Melissa awakens to find her mother gone. She calls out to her but there seems to be an unsettling quiet. She suddenly sees the opening but before she could go through, Melissa is confronted by an unexpected sight. Amy stands before her. As she calls out, horrifying vines and blood emerge from the cuts on her hand and ensnare Melissa in an inescapable grip, her senses assaulted by the nightmarish vision. The nightmare shatters, and she is left coughing and gasping on the floor. Right then, a terrified Diane returns, drenched in blood. As she fearfully cries in front of her mother, Diane reassures her despite the shattered belief that underlies her words. The movie comes to an abrupt end when an unseen growling creature lurking beyond the door barges and emits Diane's mantra of hope and Melissa's resigned cries.